Hi, good morning everyone. It is 10.45 a.m. and I figured I would talk a little bit about work in case sometimes people found that interesting. Like funnily enough, some of the videos that I made while I was searching for a new job, uh, searching for my current job, was highly viewed by people, especially one video where I wrote I titled it working in tech sucks and somehow that video has gotten a lot of views and people are complaining about some of the stuff I said when honestly that video was just a vlog it's just me talking through my thoughts I wasn't trying to make general statements that apply to other people because obviously I know I have my own opinions and I never make these videos to try to appeal to other people so once in a while when people post um, a negative comment on that video it gets very annoying but anyways just in general in regards to work because I am trying to do some right now I want to take a walk during lunch probably I'm not sure what I want to eat yet during lunch um, I cooked yesterday and I have enough leftovers for one more meal but I also don't know if I want to eat the same thing for three meals in a row. So anyways, um, I have been working from home since, let me see when, where's my mouse? Oh, there it is. I think I've been working from home since March 10th, I think. So it has actually been two weeks now. And I did check the emails sent out by the company and they said that we're working from home until March 31st and then they will probably make updates until then. So I'm going to try to follow that as much as possible because yeah, if we go back in on April 1st, I'm not going to be happy about that. I was actually in the process of applying to other jobs around the beginning of March because that was kind of my plan. I would be here for two years and figure out whether I can be happy here for a long time and since they don't easily allow remote work that's not going to happen so I started applying to strictly remote jobs and I had about two to three um, responses and didn't really make it past that but in the meantime I don't think I want to continue applying because now is a weird time, I feel like, to be searching for a new job. It just feels unstable. And for a large company like mine, I feel like I'm more safe here than a smaller company that allows remote job that might just not have enough funding or they might just not have enough money to keep you on. There's just so many unknowns. So in the meantime, I'm going to halt on applying to other jobs. And another example that I feel like is very applicable to this is actually my brother. I don't know how long he has been searching for a new job. It's been several months now, but he finally got a new job. Congratulations to him. I think it's a big raise. And he went from New York to San Francisco. Actually, I think the office that he works in isn't exactly in San Francisco. It's more like in the Mountain View area, kind of like Silicon Valley. So he recently flew over, but unfortunately based on <laughs> information from my mom, his stuff hasn't made its way over yet. So he is in his apartment, his expensive ass apartment, and he doesn't have much stuff, like no furniture, he doesn't have a TV, he doesn't have his computer, all he has is his phone, maybe some kitchenware that he bought, maybe a chair, I don't know if he even has a chair, I think he's sleeping on some sort of like mattress, maybe an air mattress. So that really sucks because he doesn't actually start work until end of March, so a couple more days. So with all this free time that he has and the directive to stay at home because of the coronavirus, he has nothing to do. I feel so bad for him. I feel like I, I don't even know what he's doing. He's managing, I guess. Oh, I don't think this was something that I addressed on video before. But I don't know if it's something I want to go too into detail because I've talked through it extensively on stream before and I feel like it's just a topic that I kind of want in the past and it really is. I'm no longer bitter about it anymore, but basically the gist is 
my coworker has always been kind of like, um, how do I describe it? He was always someone that I got along with very, very well, like very well. However, there would be moments where if I'd ask him a question, work-related or even not work-related, he would be condescending or he would give me an attitude back and he would be very difficult to try to get information from, which is dumb because he is supposed to be helping me. He is like my lead. And if I ever have questions towards him, he shouldn't be shrugging me off or giving me attitude or making it frustrating to talk to him. But he did. So after a year and a half of him behaving that way, eventually I reached a point where I was like, I'm tired of his attitude. And honestly, if it wasn't for work, people with that quality where they're randomly just giving you a shitty attitude, that's not something I would tolerate in my personal life. So the only reason I was compelled to talk to him is because of work. So I eventually started kind of like distancing myself from him in terms of small talks, chatting in the office, or even like going out for lunch with him and another friend that he has in the office. And eventually that started creating a lot of tension because he didn't like that. I was dis distancing myself from him. And he started trying to save it by being a little bit overbearing. Like he would ask me to lunch almost every day or he would ask me, can you, you want to come with me to do this? You want to come with me to do this? Would you like me to bring you a bakery item, a pastry or something? And I would always just say no, I just didn't want to because like I just no longer felt any desire or motivation to talk to him and just spend time with him. So eventually it started becoming really, really uncomfortable in the office because we sat very close to each other and even if we weren't talking, you know, our presence next to each other, there's tension and you feel it throughout the workday and it's just a really terrible feeling. And I started dreading going into work. I just really didn't like the feeling. So eventually I talked to my manager about it because it didn't really feel like he was getting the picture. Like, all right, this is too much explanation. <laughs> but basically I talked to my manager and he separated us. And he did also separate the work that we were doing because all of my work, all of it revolved around him and needing to talk to him and get my new um, assignments from him and everything. So with this change though, um, it started limiting what type of work I could do, which is not a good thing. I did start working on a tool for the test engineers to try to help them minimize their effort when it comes to manual testing and I actually really like that I developed this tool and I'm still working on it regularly because they keep asking for new features they give positive feedback and I'm like oh great I would love to add a new feature for you and I do enjoy working on this however since I end up needing additional work to do that's not related to my coworker, I feel like my manager started um, just I don't know finding any task that is somewhat coding related and wanting me to be involved. So one of them is this tool that apparently a lot of people use and I don't understand the business side very well, but basically this tool was developed in Excel and Access, I think. And that is not coding I am interested in. I used to work on Microsoft Access databases at Chubb and I really didn't like it. I don't really feel like, uh, I don't know, I don't like working on that stuff because it just feels kind of outdated and at the same time, it is a really, really, really large tool that a lot of people use and basically the owner that created it and managed it for over like six years, he was accepting a new position in Alaska. So he was moving and they needed somebody to start managing it. That's not him because he has new responsibilities and I guess he doesn't really have time for it anymore. So they passed that on to me. And up until now, I haven't really had that much work in relation to it, which is good because I don't like to work on it. But right now they have something that they would like added. And I guess when it comes to this tool, I get a lot of anxiety 
because I'm kind of intimidated that they are asking for something that might be difficult or it will take time for me to deliver. And honestly, I feel like during this situation, I should try to be less shy about the time I might need to deliver what they need because it's a big tool and I don't work on this type of coding ever. So learning the syntax in itself is going to be a little bit new for me. So it will take a bit more time for me to provide an update to their tool just because it's like a completely new thing for me. But in general, just any sort of additional work on this, I'm not really fond of. So that's kind of what I fear about my current position. I kind of worry that I'm going to end up getting more tasks that aren't focused on my role. And that's what started happening at Chubb. That's why I became unhappy there because of leadership changes. And actually, there is reorganization going on. What the fuck is this? There is reorganization going on at my company. They announced that two weeks ago during our department meeting and I wasn't paying attention. I was uh, doing an interview during it. They just happened to be scheduled together and I was like, uh, fuck it, I'll just join the meeting and then do my interview. So I don't know exactly what's going on. I should try to figure that out soon, but hopefully this Corona thing subsides fairly quickly and when I say that I don't want it to be like rushed next week gone I just mean hopefully it does not last until fall and hopefully life can go back to normal and then I can begin applying again and hopefully land myself a remote job so after that little chat I do need to resume doing work because I haven't exactly been the most productive and that's no bueno. Alrighty, I am going to begin my afternoon lunch break, I guess, at Arm Place while I was working. And I like the idea of focusing my days on completing a task and then pretty much viewing my workday as over. So one thing on my tool that I want to deploy is just grouping some tags together and I feel like once I have that finished then I'm gonna be complete so I think I'm about halfway done and I'm now going to take her for a walk over there I have some cat pee pads that I actually need to remember when I open packages like that I'll take the stuff out and put it away and then I need to make sure I wash my hands without touching my face because it has been handled by other people so I think my lunch break will look like I'll take her for a walk, hopefully a longerish one because it's nice and sunny out, although a little bit breezy. And then I'd like to do a workout and then I will figure out what I want to eat for lunch. Probably deliver something. I just don't feel like eating what I cooked just yet. My precious little kitties. Milo. Don't you ignore me, boy. Milo. Yummy. Hi, it is 325 right now, and I want to take Puppers out for a little fetch session. I just finished my workout, and then I'll probably do a couple more hours of work before I watch my movie. I'm not sure if I feel like showering today. I'm feeling kind of lazy, honestly. Um, we'll see, we'll see. And I'm also going to try streaming tonight. I'm gonna check my speeds. During the day, my upload packet loss is insane, and I get a drop in bitrate constantly, so I can't. Even early evening, I feel like that would be a problem also because a few nights ago I tried streaming up until 9 p.m. and it just was not working at all. So I'm kind of not hopeful, but I want to get her some exercise because it's still plenty sunny outside and I want to get as much sunlight exposure to the outside world as I can in my yard playing fetch with her before I am holed up in the house for the evening. Wow, peeing right in the middle. I gotta walk through there, pups. All right, it is so messy out here. You can barely see her. And she peed in the middle. Let's try to go around here. There we 
go. Look at how tall this grass is. Sooner or later, all of these things are gonna dry up and I won't be able to fetch with her back here anymore. Oh, okay, put this down. Let me cover up my motorcycle. I am finished with work for the day and just before I start continuing on watching my German film, The Wave, it was from year 2008 or something like that, I got more skincare products that arrived and I actually mainly decided to buy now because I feel like some sites during this time they will be having sales to encourage you to keep buying so they had a 20% off site wide and I felt like might as well just kind of restock up on products that I'm running out on. And I kind of just wanted to show them before I uh, resumed my movie. So these two, these two are ones that I am restocking. This one is a vitamin E mask and it's mainly like a moisturizer. And this is a vitamin C drop that I tend, these both, most of these products will be stuff that I end up using daily. So this is one that I tend to use mainly at night. During the day, I have another moisturizer that I use. I kind of have been rotating between two different kinds during the day because I have a lot. <laughs> and uh, they actually take a while to run out. So even though upfront the cost is a lot, they do last a while. This is another one called Youthful Glow Sugar Mask. It's by Claire's. This is a Korean brand. I believe almost all of these are Korean brands. And this one is an exfoliator. The one that I have right now is running out, so I wanted to make sure that I had another. I definitely notice a difference when I use an exfoliator and I don't, because when you do put one on and you realize how much dead skin that you're scraping off, it just makes your face feel so clean afterwards. So I really wanted to make sure that I had another one to use regularly. This one is Misa Cho Bo Yang. Misa Cho Bo Yang. Is this a Chinese brand? I have no idea. But it's an eye cream and it's got a cute little container and uh, it looks like, <laughs> it looks like this. So up until now, I have actually never really used eye creams, but I feel like it's kind of dumb if I neglected my eye area and treated everything else around my face. So I wanted to make sure I had eye cream and recognizing that the skin around your eyes is different than your face and you can't use um, regular moisturizer for it. And then lastly, this is a new cleanser that I'm gonna end up using once my existing one runs out. This one is a two-step process where it has a water-based and an oil-based, I believe. This one had pretty good reviews online. The brand is Then I Met You. I think it is a custom brand of the creator of the website that I tend to order from. And maybe it's special because these were not applicable to the discount, so I wanted to get them and try them out. So that is actually pretty much it. <laughs> That's all I got. And, uh... <sighs> feels nice to take care of my skin. I want to look youthful for a while. I have the race card that I get benefits from, but I can still do my part to make sure that I keep everything in good condition.
Good morning. It is Friday and it's about 11 in the morning. I don't really feel like making breakfast so I heated up my lunch that I cooked two days ago and I'll be eating that. It's just broccoli and beef. Um, I did go grocery shopping two days ago so I will try my best to cook again today. And uh, I've been kind of bummed about the weather around here lately because it's just chilly. There's not much sun outside and I feel like even if there was, it's still pretty breezy and it's in the 60s, so not the most pleasant for me. I get pretty cold in the 60s. And uh, I've been needing to set my house hot as usual, which is a little surprising, I have to say, because it's almost April. In the San Diego, I was thinking that the night times shouldn't be as cold anymore, but they have been. There's times where I'm freaking cold. I actually need to buy a new blanket because the one that I have now was one that I bought off Amazon when I moved here. So it's been about three years and it's also not warm enough for me. I think I would rather be slightly on the hotter side than being cold and my feet get cold pretty easily along with my nose. <laughs> if my nose is cold, then I know that my body is cold. So I should try to look one up today. There have also been times where I come here to the couch because my wall heater, I think you can see it behind me, that's directly right there. I don't know if I mentioned this. I'm pretty sure I did mention this, but this house does not have central heating. That is my source of heat, that fucking wall shit. And I hate it because it makes a ton of noise. It's always clanging. It, be, it just makes so much noise and it doesn't heat up the house very well. It only heats up this room well, but my bedroom, not really. I have to leave the door open just so maybe a little bit of heat manages to get in the room. Otherwise, if I leave that on during the night when I'm sleeping, like it's gonna take a while for that heat to even reach me, so it's kind of pointless. I am still pretty frustrated about my internet because I feel like my provider is just shitting the bed right now. When I go to their uh, customer service Twitter, there's a bunch of people complaining about their service being bad and that it hasn't been working for nearly a week, that they're not getting the speeds that they should, and um, that's pretty much on par with what's happening with me. They did say that they would credit me when I called them, but I don't actually think I have access to my account online because I think when I moved from my last address to this one, something weird happened with my account because if I log in to an account that I have access to, it shows my last address and it shows that there's no service at all, but I get emails about my bill and then when I try to go to it, you know, I don't have maybe the right username and password, I have no idea. So I can't see what kind of credit I got, maybe it's like a $5 piece of shit. But I, this has been going on for a few days now, three to four days. And I guess I say that because the last time I streamed, the last stream that I checked five days ago looked fine. So I don't think I was having issues that day, nor was I aware of this or started becoming paranoid about it. And um, every single day, these past few days, I've been running this continuous speed test to see if my internet is better, but it's been disappointing because it would, the problem is it looks fine, but then once in a while it will plummet. My upload speed will plummet down and then I will get packet loss, like 20% packet loss, and it'll continue like that for a few seconds and then it goes back up. And the thing is, I think that the way Twitch handles drops like that, it, I don't know, I was talking to somebody about it because I was like, if I get a few seconds of shitty internet, but then it goes back to what it should be, why does my stream look so terrible? Because what basically happens is my bit rate drops down under a thousand kilobits per second and it looks so bad, pixelated like crazy. The screen entirely turns gray and then it's just super pixelated. And when I check the stream health, when I do a test for it, um, it shows that the bit rate is slowly climbing up, but it doesn't get back up to 6,000, which is what I set it to when I stream in 1080p. And I was like, you know, 
if my internet manages to bounce back pretty quickly after a few seconds, why does the stream not? And he was saying something like, maybe... Trash truck is here. Maybe they want to verify that your speeds are good again before they decide to... What's the word? <laughs> like project it onto the viewers. So it's pretty much a bad idea for me to stream right now. And I, if I stream and I get these really shitty cases, they would drive me crazy because quality is super important to me. If I'm not streaming in 1080, I even tried to stream in 720 before I figured out it was my internet. And I was like, what the fuck is going on? I lowered my bit rate. I lowered the demand that I'm requiring and it's still looking like shit. So I'm kind of bummed out because when you're home all the time and you can't do some internet things that you're used to, it will piss you off. And with all the time that we have now, I would love to stream and play some Dota. I feel like it would be nice for growth of the channel or just, you know, passing the time. I don't even know if I could game confidently um, because I felt like I was noticing noticeable lag yesterday when I was playing just one game of Dota. I wanted to try it out. Um, I don't think I see issues with my download speed when I am um, running this continuous speed test, but I don't know. I normally play on US East for Dota because there tends to be a higher percentage of players at high MMR in that region compared to US West, but um, I just noticed the lag in my game yesterday and it was it would probably affect my performance pretty drastically, so I didn't want to continue playing on it. And I don't, I really don't think it's a US East latency thing because I tend to get 80 to 90, 80 to 100 MS on US East, and I have been playing on that for a while, like months. So if it was the usual, I don't think I would have noticed it being bad, but it was bad yesterday, so. I don't even think I can properly game right now and that makes me so sad. I can play Underlords because that's like a turn-based game where speed and latency isn't that bad. Um, I remember back in the auto chess days, if you wanted to make like a lot of quick buying and selling and movement on your board, then yes, latency would definitely matter. But in a game like, I don't know, Underlords feels different where it's not gonna be that way anymore. So uh, I can still play that, but you know, that's not what I prefer to play. It is fun, and I do see myself playing it a bit every day because I do play it with friends. Dota and streaming is just what I prefer. And honestly, every day, I'm still like, fuck, I want to play other games. I just want to, I do want to spend my time playing some games while this quarantine is going on because that is my passion, but it is also very hard for me to get into other games. So it's hard for me to find one and just pick it up and be into it. And that's why I tend to go with what I'm familiar with, where I try to gravitate towards classic WoW. Definitely no interest in retail WoW. Um, Half-Life Alex also came out this week, but that requires VR. And um, I, if I had bought VR, I would probably buy the Index from Valve, which is $1,000, which is a lot of money and not something that I would want to spend right now on something that I'm not even sure I'd enjoy. So, kind of stumped right now, watching a bunch of movies. Yeah, a lot of time to watch movies and no excuses not to work out, for sure. My food is ready and I gotta get back to work, so. I have also been thinking about... I know I've made several videos on Riley, but I have been kind of tempted to talk about her again, maybe more in depth about our journey. But I kind of get the feeling it will be repetitive with previous videos and maybe some of it will be different. But I don't know, I'm kind of tempted because whenever I talk to people about her and training and my own journey, I kind of realize how much I actually went through. When we're in our place right now where things are good, it's hard to remember the difficult times that you had because things have been good for a while. It is nice to be home with her all day doing work. <laughs>